Hello viewers, uh, in this video we're going to look at the restoration of this Quantel paint box that I mentioned in my channel update video the other day. So for those of you who know what a Quantel paint box is, uh, stick around, you're going to enjoy this one. If you don't know what a Quantel paint box is, stick around anyway because this stuff is really cool, you'll probably find it interesting. So uh, what I'm going to do to get started, we'll get this opened, I'll give you a quick tour of the insides of a Quantel paint box. I know I've done this before, um, but for those who haven't uh, seen the inside of one of these, I know want to know a little bit more, I'll give you a quick tour. So if you don't know what a Quantel paint box is, uh, this was a very professional uh, video painting system that started life in 1981, uh, revised in the late 1980s uh, called the V-Series, um, and it was used extensively throughout the broadcasting TV industry uh, for various things uh, from news, special effects and all sorts of different things. So these were sold in very, very few numbers. Uh, they were used by professionals. It was all highly expensive stuff. You know, one of these basic Quantel paint boxes would have set you back about 70 grand back in the 90s. So they weren't common. Uh, they were used by a privileged few. And this is one of the reasons why there's so few of these around now. And it's really important to keep these running, um, at least some of them, so people can see and experience what a Quantel paint box is really all about. So what I'm going to do now is get this opened. Uh, I'm going to start disassembling it partially uh, because there's a few things in, inside of it that I want to take out and actually work on as we go through and restore this. Right, so we've got the um, 3U Quantel crate, as they used to call it. This is the smallest that any of the paint boxes came. They would go up to um, 8U rack units, depending on what kind of model you had. Uh, but this is a basic one, so it's just a 3U. And after undoing some thumb screws on the back, we can just lift it up like this, and then lift it open, and there's two supports here. This allows us access to the cards uh, while the machine is on. Um, but what we're gonna do is actually open this up completely which just means we have to lift it out. Slot that into there. This episode of Dexter's Tech Lab has been brought to you with the help of PCBWay. PCBWay offer a massive range of services and options for manufacturing your own custom PCBs. And right now they have some fantastic deals on as they celebrate their sixth year in business. There's tons of coupons and offers available for the next 10 days or so. Uh, so this is a right moment to get your PCBs made or, or you could try out one of their community design PCBs that are all ready to order. So uh, go check out PCBWay.com and find out more. Okay, so nice quick tour of Quantel paint box. Uh, inside the crate we have a large uh, Weir um, SMM 300 power supply, I think. Um, nice big power supply, really reliable these. Um, I'm not gonna have to do anything with this. Uh, there's actually a few uh, small capacitors that I normally replace in these, but I've just looked through the grill and it seems they've uh, been changed or they were, came from the factory with tantalum caps in, rather than the electrolytic ones that I normally replace. So um, that looks like that won't need anything doing to it. Uh, we've got the uh, Fujitsu uh, three and a half inch hard disk in the back, that's scuzzy. Uh, we've got the wiring loom, which comes up and powers the, um, the back plane, which Quantel called the highway. And then we have um, seven cards plugged into that highway, uh, which make up the rest of the paint box. So the main paint box uh, consists of six cards, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, that are slot in down here. Uh, there's an extra card here. This is called the bridge processor. Um, this is actually a networking interface uh, for the paint box. Uh, and allows you to connect multiple paint boxes and other systems together. Now, uh, I've never actually um, had a bridge processor working, so we're actually gonna try and get that working on this machine. Now, as the bridge processor um, is a completely separate um, 68,000 base computer, so there's um, ROM, RAM, there is a real-time clock, um, non-volatile RAM on there. Now, that is something we're gonna need to look at because those will be battery-backed and they will be flat, so those will need to be replaced. So this board is gonna come out. So we're gonna to need to disconnect all these uh, cables. Uh, the reason for all these uh, big cables connecting to it, they're all scuzzy. Um, the way that the Quantel paint box, which is these six cards on the top here, talk to the bridge processor is over scuzzy. Um, and there's actually two scuzzy channels on here, A and B. 
uh, which is the reason why we've got so many big 50-way connectors. So let's start by removing the bridge processor. So uh, that's the bridge processor card. Don't worry, you'll get to see this in a bit more detail later on. This card here is the uh, main CPU. Um, it's a 68,000, uh, well, actually a 68010, uh, running at 10 megahertz. Um, so a complete 68,000 computer on there with 16 megabytes of RAM. Um, now, I don't need to do anything on this. Uh, the two non-volatile RAMs, it looks like I replaced these in 2018, so they'll still be absolutely fine. This card is the perspective card. This is a card which can be swapped and interchanged with other ones. Um, this does perspective, uh, so it does scaling, rotation, and skewing um, in a 3D perspective manner. So you can sort of take a flat image and skew it that way, rotate it, and uh, do various things with it. That's what that card does. Next card is the disk store. Uh, this has six megabytes of RAM and is one of the uh, frame stores used um, in the in the paint box. So there's a few uh, custom Quantel chips on there. Next card out is the main store card. So there's two frame stores on here. You can see uh, these zip uh, drums on there. So there's six megabytes there and six megabytes there to give us a total of 12 uh, with more of those custom chips for doing that uh, wonderful hardware assisted drawing and painting. So uh, this next card to come out is the video output card. This is slightly newer than what I have in my uh, Quantel Harriet uh, because this actually has SDI digital video um, and the sort of architecture of it is slightly different uh, because it actually has a buffer um, RAM on this to actually buffer the two images. Uh, we'll look at that this card in a little bit more detail when we come to uh, start repairing it because we're going to need to work on this one. So um, that will be in a future video. Uh, this card is the uh, video input card. So we have uh, on here two um, SDI input modules. Um, those, are, I believe, are working on this machine. And then we've got four channels of analog video input. You might ask, why have we got four? The reason for that is we have uh, YUV or RGB input. So we've got Luma and two Chroma. Um, those can be swapped to be RGB instead. But the fourth one is another Luma channel, and that is for used for the keying um, channel, which allows you to key uh, one picture over the top of another. So that's why you have just one channel there of just Luma, because it's just a black and white signal. I've just put those cards back in uh, for safekeeping. Uh, next thing to come out is the hard disk. I'm going to need to take an image of that and also replace it for a SCSI to SD adapter um, because these old SCSI disks, um, a lot of them are reliable, but um, in the long term, it's better to swap these out for some flash storage. So first off, let's take a look at uh, this bridge processor card. Now this in the paint box provides a networking interface. Um, it's an evolution of uh, an earlier base system which used uh, two SCSI channels to connect uh, two paint boxes together um, and allowed you to share pictures between them. Um, this is a bit of an evolution of that because it uses those same two SCSI channels but it provides a network interface onto one end of them. Now in this case, um, it's actually using 10 base 2. Uh, there is a, a coax port on the back of the paint box, which provides the uh, actual network connection. Now I'd like to get this working. Uh, so uh, what I'm probably going to need to do is replace the non-volatile RAMs and then power it up and see whether I can get the software configured. But what I'd like to do first is just give you a quick tour of the board, um, just so I can point out the major components. So this is a completely self-contained uh, 68,000 uh, system. Uh, we've got a, a 68070, which is actually um, a version of the 68010, I think. Uh, this is actually manufactured by Philips, um, so that provides the CPU. Uh, we've got uh, the connections to the paint box here. I think this might be a diagnostics terminal port. We've got four megabytes of RAM. We've got uh, one of the SCSI channels here uh, with its SCSI controller, a Western Digital uh, 
33C93, a very common SCSI uh, chipset. We can see here as well, we have the SCSI termination resistor packs um, not populated here. Uh, we've got the two EEPROMs for the Quantel monitor um, program, which uh, is what the system powers up into. Um, I, I already have a copy of those. Uh, we've got non-volatile memory and a real-time clock as well. Uh, down in the bottom corner here, we have this port here. This connects over to the coax port for the ethernet connection. A, a little bit of looking around on here, we can see here we have an AMD AM7992, and this is actually an AUI transceiver, uh, which is really, really handy. I was a little bit worried that uh, Quantel might have, might have spun their um, own network interfacing things, um, but no, thankfully they are using standard AUI to connect uh, from here to the actual port itself, which is really handy because theoretically I should be able to create a cable uh, to convert this um, and convert it into a standard um, 15 pin AUI connection. So it means I should be able to plug on this twisted pair adapter and possibly convert this to twisted pair, which is far more practical than uh, the coax. Uh, we'll have to look at that um, towards the end of the series of looking at this paint box uh, because I'll need to get all the software configured before I start looking at doing that anyway. Uh, right next to that we have uh, the security pal. This is a pal or a gal which has been programmed. Um, it effectively operates as a ROM device and it contains the machine serial number um, and a couple of configuration bytes. Um, it is actually um, pseudo encrypted uh, took a, a little bit of a time and effort many years ago to try and figure that out but thankfully we did I can actually produce my own um, security pals um, next to that we have uh, a peripheral controller for the 68000 very very common that's the MC 68681 uh, we've got this port here I'm not entirely sure what this one is for um, never really found out I don't have any schematics of this so I've not really been able to discover exactly what that is used for. Um, next along we've got another SCSI connection, as I said we've got SCSI channels A and B, um, so we've just got another SCSI port there uh, with the same Western Digital controller. And on the end uh, we've got some configuration options, um, we've got a, a TL311 um, hex display, just displays little status information uh, while it's booting up. So the next step on this is to remove these old non-volatile RAMs and replace them with some new. Um, I've actually, I do actually have uh, two new ones here ready to go in. Uh, we'll be uh, putting them into a socket so they can be easily replaced in the future. So uh, this is going to be a little bit of a problem to get these extracted out because they're not in sockets. Uh, so I'm going to have to try and desolder these out. Uh, I think what I might do is actually remove um, this pal or possibly a gal from here and this ROM um, that'll give us a little bit more space. There's actually two types of these ST micro um, non-volatile RAMs. There's the ones that where the pins come directly out of the bottom and then there's ones that actually, they actually come out on the side a little bit. Now I've actually found um, you can actually clip the legs off um, and extract them out that way. It's a little bit easier than uh, trying to desolder every pin, but uh, I'm not sure whether I'm gonna have access in there to get the cutters down and actually snip those legs. Okay, so I'm just gonna try and snip these legs. Uh, depends whether I can get, the, get these down between those two, between the gap. And it doesn't look like I can, but I think Should be able to get them on this side. Yes. So what this means I should be able to do is just snip each of the legs on this one and this side on this one. And that will actually allow me to bend them up and um, I should just be able to wiggle them side by side and it'll slowly break the legs off if I'm nice and careful.
Yep. So what I need to do now is unsolder all of the uh, broken old pins uh, and get some nice sockets installed so we can put those NV rams back. Uh, so what I did was actually just pick out each of the uh, broken pins with a pair of tweezers and a soldering iron. I wanted to show you on camera, but unfortunately it was a little bit hard to get the angle right with the camera just here. So um, I had to do it off camera, I'm afraid. Um, so we've got all the pins removed. I just need to suck out all the excess solder and we can pop those sockets in. So next up is just to solder in these two new turn pin sockets. So all we need to do now is plug back in the chips that we took out and the EEPROM. And we can finally install the new non-volatile RAMs. Now these sockets are slightly bigger than the uh, devices because um, it's quite common to see. Uh, they had extra pins at the top, but uh, they're just not used, so it just goes in the lower, the lower set. It needs to go in. In there. Now that is actually a bit of a tight fit between those, but I think it should go in. Yeah, there's not a lot of gap between those, but they are in, so I think they should be fine. Excellent, so that um, concludes part one of the Quantel paint box restoration. Uh, thanks for watching everybody. Stick around, don't forget part two will be coming up very soon when we tackle a much bigger job uh, which is replacing these SDI serializers um, yeah bit of a pain these should make an interesting video so stick around and I'll see you in part two thanks for watching everyone bye for now